Ah, uh, don't touch that dial, because there's nothing else on. You might just as well listen to Blondie. Blondie, rebroadcast for the servicemen and women of the United Nations, with Penny Singleton and Arthur Lake as Blondie and Dagwood Bumstead, respectively. Before we join the Bumsteads of Shady Lane Avenue... Let's gather around the bandstand for a curtain raiser from Lenny Kahn and his orchestra. Raise that curtain, Len. weekly visit with our neighbors, the Bumsteads of Shady Lane Avenue, who have as their guest tonight, Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks. Tonight, Baby Snooks is going to visit the Bumstead. But first, let's look in at 127 Shady Lane Avenue and see what's going on. Something seems to be wrong with Alexander, the pride and joy of the Bumstead family. It seems he isn't enjoying school this year as much as he did before. Blondie and Dagwood are talking to Alexander, who's just arrived home after a hard day with his teacher. Well, Alexander, how did school go today? Huh? I said, how did school go today? I didn't notice. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you? What happened today? I don't know. I haven't seen the evening paper yet. Uh, oh, no. We mean what happened at school. Oh, at school. Yeah. Oh, Alexander, please pay attention and focus your eyes. Excuse me, Mom. Seem like you're only half here. It's even less than that. Uh, <laughs> look, Alexander, we'd like to know what happened at school. We're your parents, and we hope we're not asking too much. But we would like to know what happened at school, if, if anything. <laughs> oh, it was the same old stuff. Uh, well, go ahead, go ahead. What? Well, the teacher asked me some questions, and I answered the questions. Yeah, well, I, huh? Y you answered them all? <laughs> That's my son. I answered them all wrong. That's your son. Yeah. <laughs> 
Alexander, just what seems to be wrong with school this year, huh? Nothing. There just doesn't seem to be anything right about it. And that's a hard situation to correct. Well, I'm going upstairs and mope around. Call me when dinner's ready. Mm. How do you like that? I don't. I can't understand what's wrong with him. Well, Blondie, maybe it's one of those things. You know, Blondie, ever so often he decides on his life's work. And he's going to be an actor, a chemist, or a steeplejack, and uh, we have trouble with him until he forgets it. What do you think he's decided to be this time? A loafer. <laughs> well, he can't get away with that in this family, even if he did get the idea from you. Yeah, even if he did get it, Blondie. <laughs> Well, Alexander usually sees you lying on that couch. Yeah? He hardly knows what you look like standing up. Oh, Blondie. He's beginning to think his father is something horizontal that snores. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, Blondie, that's not fair. You, you can't blame me for the way Alexander's been acting. Well, what do you think is wrong, then? He certainly lost interest in things. Yeah, he seems to have lost interest in everything. Yeah, well, wait a minute. I'll test him out. Alexander! Do you want a quarter? I said, do you want a quarter? I heard you the first time, Pop. I'm just thinking it over. Oh, he's lost interest all right. (laughs) Well, do you want it? Yeah, I'll take it. Oh, thank you too much. (laughs) When I come downstairs again, you can drop it in my pocket. Maybe maybe he'd like me to spend it for him, too. (laughs) Dagwood. Huh? You know, I've been thinking. Yeah. Maybe we're not taking enough interest in his mental development. Well, I have. I've always been interested in training his mind the same way mine was trained. But you always chase me away from him. Well, dear, one Dagwood Bumstead is enough. Yeah. Mm. You know, Dagwood, I think I'd better have a little talk with him and see if I can't get him interested in something. Oh, that's swell. <laughs> yeah, but what are you going to get him interested in? I know. Mm. I know exactly what I'll talk to him about. I'll explain to him what's going on in the world. You know, Alexander doesn't realize that history is being made all around him. (laughs) Now, Alexander, I want to have a little chat with you. Okay, Mom. What about... Well, you seem to have lost interest in things. Uh, I don't believe you know what a very important period the world is going through right now. Well, yes, but of course I didn't attend the big powwow at Dumbarton Oaks. Where? Oh, yes. Uh, um, now, son, you just ask any questions at all and I'll uh, answer them for you. Um, what are your opinions on post-war planning and the peace? No. Uh, post-war planning and the peace? Yeah, that's right. Post-war planning and the peace. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, um, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Yes? Oh, of course, that question isn't very specific, Alexander. Ask me something that isn't so general. Well, what do you think of Lord Van Sittert's proposals? Who? Lord Van Vance... <laughs> Lord Van Sittert. Oh. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I guess that's that. Um, <laughs> Alexander, where did you hear about this Lord uh, Watchmadoodle? Oh, I listen to the radio and read the newspapers. You see, Mom, Lord Van Sittert is a believer in a hard-boiled peace. He thinks Germany should be occupied for maybe as long as 50 years. Is that right? Of course, you know about the Wells plan, don't you? Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Why, Mom? Now, don't cluck your tongue at me. At least I know the plan was recently worked out by Orson Welles. Oh. No, Mom. It was worked out by Sumner Wells. Oh, dear. Well, I don't care. You never can tell what Orson Welles is up to either. <laughs> You see, Mom, Sumner Wells thinks we ought to divide Germany up into three separate nations, set up a world council, and put put dependent areas under the protection of an international trusteeship. But that's simply amazing. Do you know about the Polish problem, too? Well, I can tell you what the problem is. 
but I don't know how they're going to unravel it. Well, now, maybe between the two of us, we can fix that up, too. I'd like to hear, Alexander. Just make yourself comfortable. Well, it sort of started with the first partition of Poland in 1712. Imagine that. Well, I didn't know they had partitions in those days. I thought everybody lived in tents. <laughs> Hello, Dagwood. Oh, my gosh, Blondie, you certainly were in Alexander's room long enough. Hey, look, did you get him interested in something? Did, did you explain to him what was going on in the world? Dagwood, uh, you just wouldn't believe what's happening in the world. Yeah? yeah. Well, what's happening, huh? Well, I just had a long lecture on international affairs. Uh. You know, our son listens like mad to the radio commentators. In fact, he could be one himself. Sort of a Raymond Graham swinglet. Yeah, um... <laughs> Well, didn't you uh, teach him anything? No, but I learned a lot myself. Oh. <laughs> but, well, did you snap him out of it, huh? No, dear. There's something else wrong with him, Dagwood, and I don't know what it is. Alexander seems to be bored with life. He does? Isn't he a little young for that? I, uh, I thought they didn't get bored with life until they were 16. <laughs> they don't? <laughs> so, I guess he isn't bored with life. Must be something else. Yeah, well, I know what I'm going to do, Blondie. I'm, well, I'll get him interested in sports. Tomorrow morning, before I leave for the office, I'll take Alexander outside and run him through a little football practice. Yeah, maybe that'll break this up. We'll see. Yeah. But maybe it'll break you up, too. Their little football game has gone all right so far this morning. Uh oh. I spoke too soon. Well, now let's see. I guess there are plenty of ice cubes for his head, if it is his head, and plenty of cushions if it isn't. Oh, Mom! What happened, Alexander? I tried to go through my side of the line and I glommed him. Oh, Alexander. Well, he needled me into it. I usually pretend I can't hold on to him, but he insisted on my giving him the full treatment. And you did. And how? Gee, I'm not in the mood for all this excitement. Well, I've got to be on my way to school, I suppose. So long, Mom. Oh, wait a minute. Where's your father now? Ken Niles is bringing him right in. I'll just take it easy there, Dagwood. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you just lean on me. Yeah. I'll call the Army camp up. I'll have that man court-martialed. They can't do that to Dagwood Bumstead. Who can't do what? I've just been sideswiped by a tank destroyer. <laughs> oh. Now, Dagwood. Uh, do I look like a tank? Well, I wouldn't have married you if you were. Yeah, well, I can't understand how it happened. I was whizzing past Alexander with the ball when... This tank destroyer butted in. Now, you didn't actually see it, did you, Dagwood? No, but you saw where it plowed that furrow in the ground, didn't you? Your nose did that. It, oh. <laughs> oh, dear, just look at the mud on your shirt. I'll get you a clean one, dear. Yeah. The Bumsteads, as if you didn't know, will be back again in just a few moments. Right now, that man, Lenny Kahn, prepares to downbeat the orchestra for this sparkling selection. Well, sparkle, man. <laughs>
you uh, feeling better now, Dagwood? Yeah, I, I suppose so, but I still haven't found out what's eating Alexander. Oh, Dagwood, look at the time. You're going to be late for the office. Uh, huh? Oh, I... Do. Oh, holy smoke. Get the door open for me. It already is open, Dagwood. It is? Well, then close it and open it again. Yeah. Do you want to ruin my timing? <laughs> All right, Dagwood. The door's open now, Dagwood. Okay, honey. Get out of the way, Mr. Niles. He sails out the door like a buzz bomb. Uh, okay. Come on, Dagwood. You'll be late to the office. Hurry. Okay. Where's my hat? Where's my hat? Right there on the hat rack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Oh, that's not the hat rack. That's Ken Niles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, dear. Yeah. yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Come into my office. <laughs> I can't come now, Mr. Diggers. Why not? I've got a white voice and elephant. Ha, <laughs> ha, All right, come in as soon as you're through. Bumps head. <laughs> I was just making up little jokes, Mr. Diggers. What's the matter with you? What were you doing? Mm, well, I was thinking... On company time, huh? <laughs> I'll bet it hurt, too. Uh, oh, oh, Mr. Dillard, I've got something on my mind. I know. It's all over your shoulders, too. Yeah. <laughs> However, what is it? Yeah, well, well, it's... it's it, well, it's about Alexander. Oh. Uh, ever since school started, he's been moping around and paying very little attention to practically nothing most of the time, usually. You ought to be hit over the head with that sentence. Uh -huh. What's wrong with him? Uh, that's just it, Mr. Diddick. We don't know. Well, didn't you ever feel like that when you were Alexander's age? Yeah, I did once. Mm, gosh, I felt terrible. It, it was like the end of the world. Oh, what happened? The price of lollipops went up. <laughs> How typical. Yeah. I don't suppose you know whether the price of lollipops has gone up or down lately. Oh, the price has stayed the same, but I find they don't last as long. Oh, I don't know. Anyhow, <laughs> Alexander's a little more mature than you were at his age. Huh? Than you are now, for that matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, J.C., uh, how about it when you went to school? Uh, did anything ever make you feel awful, huh? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Oh, it did? Hmm. Hey, maybe that'll be a clue. <laughs> what was it? Well, there was a cute little brunette in school. <laughs> oh, yeah, I should have known. I'll bet you were a regular wolf, junior grade. <laughs> hey, uh, go on. Uh, what, what about the little brunette, huh? Oh, she was eight and I was nine. Ah, uh. oh, what a delicious dish of dimple divinity. <laughs> Oh, no, now, you couldn't have been that cute, Mr. Diddy. <laughs> I met the girl. Hey, oh, yeah. Her name was Gwendolyn O'Toole. Uh -huh. She couldn't play jacks or Pachisi, but boy, how she could play post office. <laughs> uh, nothing but special delivery airmail letters, huh? Mm -hmm. Registered, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but of course, when you went to school, Mr. Jitters, it was just the Pony Express. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on, go on. Well, Gwendolyn and I were finally separated. Ah. Oh, brother, it was a sad day. D did her family move out of town? Oh, no. She went on to 5B and I went back to the fourth grade. <laughs> I had to sweat out an old geography rap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I certainly lost interest in life. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I'll, I'll bet that's it. There's a woman behind this, Mr. Diddy. And as the French say, should she love Amy? Uh, oh, yeah, chase the dame. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dagwood, maybe. You've got something yeah. there. Well, come on. i tell you what we'll do. We'll sort of quiz him and find out. Oh. Because if it's a girl that's bothering him, we could... Oh, sh we... Uh huh? What's the matter? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Alexander. Hello, parents. How's everything at school, Alexander? Oh, come see, come saw. Uh-huh. Just so-so. Uh, Alexander, 
Are there any especially nice girls this year? Gosh, no. School has been awful since Toots Murphy left. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Gosh, what a woman. Mm. <laughs> he certainly could play third base. Uh-huh. Um, what's wrong with the little Rogers girl? Oh, she always gets weak from undernourishment. Right in front of the sweet shop. Mm-hmm. She gets treated so much, we call her the girl with the golden stomach. Uh-huh. Well, uh, what did this Toots Murphy do? She used the matches to see who paid. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I certainly miss that gal. Well, that's why. Mm. Well, I guess I'll go out and back and burn some leaves. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander. Yeah, I guess that's it, all right. Oh, Dagwood, I know just the thing to cure him. Well, what is it? Well, a very sweet little girl moved into our neighborhood a few weeks ago. Uh, I think I'll invite her over to meet Alexander. A sweet little girl? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Who is it? I think her family name is Hagen, Mm. but everyone calls her Snook. You you mean Baby Snook's on the radio? Yes, dear. Oh, boy, Bromby, anything can happen now. Probably Baby Snook. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see her at the door. <laughs> she certainly is a sweet-looking little girl, isn't she? Uh, <laughs> Dagwood, you let her in. Oh, dear, I hope she gets along with Alexander. How? <laughs> Do the Bumsteads live here? Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, but well, won't you come right in, Snooks? Are you Mrs. Bonestead? <laughs> Me? Uh, hey, Blondie, did you hear that? What does she mean? Uh, yeah, but what do you mean, Snooks? My daddy says that Mrs. Bonestead wears a pants in this family. <laughs> oh, he must have seen me wearing slacks. Uh, yeah. yeah, that must be it. Well, uh, uh, come inside, Snooks. Why? Because there's a very nice little boy we want you to meet. I don't like nice little boy. <laughs> well, what do you like? Hmm. I like to throw away two electric fans. <laughs> well, Snook, we have an electric fan somewhere. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, well, I was sick. <laughs> I was only trying to be helpful. Well, if you want to be helpful, stay here and entertain Snooks. Yeah. I'll be back as soon as I can find Alexander. Yeah, okay. Well, Snooks, won't you come inside and close the door? Why? Mm. <laughs> because it's cold outside. If I close the door, will it make it any warmer outside? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I never thought of that. Uh, there. Here we are. Now, is there anything you want? Yeah. What? I want to go home. <laughs> but you just got here. Would you like a nice piece of cake? Chocolate layer cake? Yes. Hmm. A chocolate filling? Yes. Hmm. And chocolate all over the top? Yes. I don't like chocolate. <laughs> Uh, maybe you'd like to play a game, huh? No. <laughs> Will you play a game with me if I give you a penny? Uh-huh. Oh, all right. <laughs> Here's a penny. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's nice. I like to hear little girls say thank you. Give me another penny and you'll hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, let's start the game. Now we'll start the game. You go first. All right. Adam and Eve and pinch me one a rare. Adam and Eve fell off. Who was left? Pinch me. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, that hurts. <laughs> yeah, what kind of a game is that? Huh? A game is something you're supposed to enjoy. Well, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's my turn now, Snooks. <clears throat> Adam 
and Eve and Pinch Me were on a raft. Adam and Eve and who? Pinch Me. Okay. <laughs> he did it again. <laughs> you want to play another game? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, sure, if it's different. Uh, what's this one called, huh? Adam and Eve and Sock Me were on a raft. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no, you don't. Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in here? Unhand that woman, sir. I never touched her. Uh, Snook, may I present my son, Alexander Bumstead? He's funny looking. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Now, I want you two children to like each other. Oh, I like her. Well, what do you say, Snook? You want to fight? <laughs> now, Snook, don't you know that little girls shouldn't fight? Uh-huh. And aren't you ashamed of yourself? Uh-huh. Then, what do you say to Alexander? Want to wrestle? <laughs> Snooks, I'm so disappointed. I thought you... Oh, leave her with... alone, Mom. I like a girl with spunk. Now, come on, Snooks. Let's go out and play. All right, funny face. <laughs> I love that girl. <laughs> uh, don't you think Snooks is wonderful, Mom? I certainly do, Alexander. What do you think, Pop? I check. <laughs> <laughs> well, so long, folks. Snooks and I are going out. Uh, what would you like to play, Snooks? I got a swell new game. What's it called? Adam and Eve and Pinch Me Want a Rest. I don't think Alexander's going to be bored with life anymore. No, I'll say not, Blondie. You sure cured him all right. Yeah! This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.